I don't know if you were aware, but the chop values are nowhere near the same as the actual slash or damage values of the weapons. And the damage numbers that you see, the grayed out numbers when you're chopping logs, nowhere near the actual represented encode numbers of chop that you deal to those logs. Those are represented by the actual damage that you would be dealing to mobs. Yeah, why does it show up like that on trees? I don't know. What are the actual values of certain chop numbers? Let's get into that. So, first off, the axe that kind of uh, isn't as relevant in the Mistlands anymore, the Crystal Battle Axe. The interesting thing about this weapon is it has cleave even with trees. So if you are chopping trees, there is no multi-target penalty. So the chop on this quality for Crystal Battle Axe is... On the primary, it is... 57.5. So if you're chopping a bunch of trees at once, this thing is still the king. Unfortunately, this thing is not at the black metal tier or above, which means it cannot chop Yggdrasil trees. It cannot chop the sap... Uh, what are the, the saplings, the Yggdrasil saplings, or the the shoots. Can't do it. Can't get you that Yggdrasil wood, so it's not very relevant. It will still be really good for large tree farms and clearing large paths for maybe aesthetic views, because if you chop a bunch of trees, uh, regular trees, or even fine wood trees, at once, or even logs, or you have rocks in the way, or maybe even the terrain, this will be the best thing for you. And we'll go over why, because we now we look at the... Black Metal Axe. This is the thing that you will be using in the Mistlands when you're going in first. This will get you your Yggdrasil wood for your Black Metal Pickaxe and it will get you started up. At quality 4, this has a chop of 69, even though the slash value is 115. Yes, chop 69 only. Very curious, very fascinating. Still pretty nice. Quality 4, got plenty of durability. Most of the time, I don't even make the Jotunbane. I just stick with this throughout the whole run, and it's good. However, the Jotunbane, even though it has part poison, I have this one quality 1, not quality 2. Quality 1 Jotunbane has 70 chops, so it's already a little bit of an upgrade. Even though it costs a little bit more stamina, that's okay. Quality 2 is 73 chop. Now, it will have less durability than the Black Metal Axe. That's not really going to be a problem because you're going to be chopping down trees in uh, decent, uh, decent enough frequency where you can just clear a small area, get all the wood, portal back with the wood, and then you have to go to the next area. And it should be just fine with the stamina cost and the durability. It should should be not, a, not even an issue. Now, weapon-wise, both of these things are outclassed by your Mistwalker. This thing also has cleave. Of course, it can't chop trees. But is just just a fire, fire weapon for control and DPS. It's got frost. It's got cleave. It's got that beautiful combo friendly speed and knockback. It is a beast. And oh man, do I love it! I love the glow especially. But let's talk about this Jotunbane glow because the aesthetic on this is really nice, particularly paired with the Dverger lantern. I love this aesthetic. And what's also good is I can run this setup here. And I can very easily just hit the 5 or wherever my Mistwalker is on my hotbar. And I can just go immediately into combat with Mistwalker. Of course, if I am in the Mistlands, I won't be having the Tevergar Lantern. I will have the Carabas Buckler on. And I'll have this aesthetic. Really nice still. And then it's just a super easy tap. And now I am super combat ready. I can even switch over to Serpent Scale Shield and uh, Root Harness if I have some big, big piercing mobs. Got the double pierce protection because of the different layers of defense. And I uh, can just very easily swap over to the Carapace Buckler should I want to parry in a difficult terrain situation being pressed up against a wall by a secret soldier or something. Super convenient like that. And then when I'm out of combat and everything's fresh, I can open up my inventory again and go back to the Yoten Bane and get back to chopping. Just super, super smooth like that. Very aesthetic. Now, honestly, uh, if you're a big wood chopper, uh, and you just plan to do a lot of projects and you want to do them with great aesthetics, I highly recommend making the Jotun Bane because the thing looks great. Uh, Weapon-wise, combat-wise, not terribly optimal for combat, but it is still that super easy swap to Mistwalker. And the cool thing about that is, unlike using the Black Metal Axe, 
being able to swap from Jotun Bane to Mistwalker and back and forth means everything is super repairable at the Black Forge. You only have to go to one workstation. And if that's not a problem with you and you just don't want to craft the Jotun Bane, that's totally fine. That's what I do. I just have a forge right over to, right over here. No problem. My forge, all my workstations are right here. Super easy. But uh, it is still convenient just running to one thing, repairing everything, running back, and having everything be super, super convenient. Now I want to show you the... Uh, recent uh, path that I cleared recently. Let's get this uh, Dvergur Lantern on just for the aesthetics. We got double glow with the Mistwalker here. I cleared out this path all the way to this mountain here. I kind of wanted it to be an aesthetic view and Feather Cape Glide down to the base. I have all this wood gathered up here. Now the main chopping process was super convenient. Oh hi Odin. Was super convenient with uh, Jotun Bane. So Jotun Bane, the, the trees were spaced far enough apart where I could just chop them down with the Jotun Bane, no problem. It was just so easy. Uh, Jotun Bane was just the king there. But once all the logs had uh, fell down and were littering the ground here and all the stumps, the Crystal Battle Axe was the king of sweeping it out. So maybe if you're a super axe chopper for co-op and you just want to chop, chop, chop and, and, and get building going and get your gathering on, uh, maybe two axes might be the uh, the way to go for you. That would, that would be technically optimal, but uh, I can understand if you don't want to carry them around. What's super smooth also is that two-handed to two-handed is a really easy swap, so you can totally go, like, Crystal Battle Axe, swap over to him and Awful, Krom, Spine Snap, Demolisher, Arbalest. All of these swaps are super easy. Your mage stuff is going to be super easy. I'm going to go Dvergur Lantern, Jotun Bane. Now, do note that the... Uh, the Jotun Bane carries with it a 20% glow while sneaking, so it's not going to be the most stealthy thing. And, <laughs> yeah, it, it, like, it'll carry a little bit of uh, anti-sneak property, but then again, you're chopping wood. So that's going to be loud as hell in the mist lens regardless, uh, and, and just anywhere. So you're going to aggro a bunch of stuff uh, regardless of what you're doing if you're chopping, 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 so that's fine. It's not like you're really going to be sneaking, but if you ever had the idea to sneak around with the Jotun Bane, just not the best idea. Plus 20% vision uh, while you're sneaking is just, no. Of course, as you can see here, going from uh, two hands, like a one-handed and then an off-hand to a two-handed is also super easy. Once I'm out of combat, I can just load everything back up. So if you ever wanted to do that, I mean, that's that is perfectly, perfectly fine as well, but uh, I want to show you the result of this uh, project that I've done. We've got double glow here. Let's go to my favorite double glow. Like so. Love the color contrast. Miss Walker shows up better than Jotun Bane on the back. And let's just go over towards the village here. Here's the result. All this land cleared. Yeah, and you just get to see the base here. That's beautiful, I love that. It's so, so nice. And of course, if I had a bunch of lights going on, it would be a little bit better. But that is A-OK. -okay. Perfectly fine. Just hanging out with the base there just makes for a really, really cool experience. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you had a good time, and I'll see you guys some other time. Bye!